So, so just to, to frame it for you, uh, with SMA, like in many other illnesses, one can, by genetically tweaking a mouse, you can make a mouse with spinal muscular atrophy. And some of the Fight SMA and other funded research has done exactly that, generated excellent models of spinal muscular atrophy, and so that these mice, instead of living two years or so, they die, I guess, within two weeks. And so what Chris's group and a number of other groups have shown, we have interventions now, which instead of having them die at 15 or 16 days or even 10 days, they live, some of them for 100, some of them for a year or more. And so it really is an, a really impressive breakthrough year as far as getting, uh, you know, identifying these therapies. I think, at the risk of overstating it, uh, that it, in the large sort of universe of, of, of rare diseases, this success is going to be one that other disorders look at and, and think as sort of a bit of a poster child of how one approaches uh, uh, what we call translational research. And I think what you'll notice is that if you look at the therapeutics that are being developed, they focus on inducing the disease gene, SMN, but also there are other avenues such as SMN independent strategies. So mm -hmm. perhaps you want to address muscle within the disease, which is not probably a primary tissue that's targeted in this disease, but maybe stronger muscle allows stronger motor neurons to exist. Yeah. Or independent of those, per, um, addressing the function without addressing the actual uh, protein deficiency. So there are all kinds of opportunities and those were all addressed and examined in SMA animal models and shown to dramatically extend the survival of these animals. It, it's a great meaning in that it's small, uh, informal, occasionally mildly abusive, where basically the, the world leaders uh, uh, in spinal muscular atrophy uh, get into a room for a day, a day and a half, and really get up there and give it their best shot. And it's rare that they get two or three minutes into the, their talk before uh, you know things are thrown or questions are asked. Or, but all joking aside, it's, it's, it's really an exciting I exchange of ideas and one that has been a, a creative source of, of new research avenues in years past. So, And I think one thing that several people commented upon was that it's not just people in the field, it's government agencies being represented as well. Uh, we have program officers from NINDS, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> from uh, FDA, all showing just how much SMA is in, in terms of being on a higher profile than it was just a number of years ago. And that SMA really is an outstanding platform for drug discovery. Mm -hmm. And as Dr. McKenzie said, it could be a poster child for how you do things in a rare, di rare disease context. And g given that it's as common as ALS, similar in some ways to ALS, but not nearly as well known, I think it's, it's overdue that it gets its props, that it gets the recognition that we think is coming its way.